Math 1314 Tyler Junior College, section 1.4 complex numbers, video 3 of 6. In the previous video, we defined the imaginary numbers, and then along with the real numbers, we created the complex numbers. Just a reminder, a complex number is, I like to call it a failed attempt to combine a real number and an imaginary number because they're not like terms, such as 3 plus 4i or 7 minus 2i. Those are examples of complex numbers. But keep in mind that all real numbers are complex numbers because the definition of complex numbers allows the imaginary part, the number in front of the i, to be any real number you want, including zero. So if the imaginary part is zero, then your complex number is also real. And the complex numbers also includes the imaginary numbers because the definition allows the real part to be zero. So every imaginary number is just a complex number whose real part is zero. So from this point forward, every number we're ever going to see can be categorized as a complex number. So what do we do with it? Well, the same thing you do anytime you learn about a new type of number. You learn how to do math with it, arithmetic to be specific. So we're going to start with addition and subtraction. And this is so easy, so intuitive, there's a chance that you can do both of these without me telling you how. So that concludes this video. I'm kidding, of course I'm going to tell you how. Coming into a college algebra class, the assumption is you already have certain algebra skills. How to do arithmetic with real numbers, how to do basic algebra such as combining like terms. That's really all you have to do to add complex numbers is combine like terms. The parts of the complex numbers that do not have eyes on them are called the real parts. So the real part of the first complex number is 3, and the real part of the second complex number is 7. So we just combine them, and of course 3 plus 7 is 10. The imaginary parts are the parts that have eyes. Now this plus belongs to that 4, so even though it's just 4i, I will say positive 4i. And that's called the imaginary part. So the imaginary part of the first complex number in this addition problem is positive 4i, whereas the imaginary part in the second complex number in this addition problem is negative 2i. So how do you combine them? The same way you would combine them if that i were any other letter. I assume you know how to combine 4x and negative 2x, or like terms in general. Like terms meaning same variables with the same powers. You just, you just combine the coefficients in front of them, but keep the same like term. So for example, when I combine i's and i's, I'm just going to get a different number of i's. Positive 4 and negative 2 is positive 2. So when I combine positive 4i and negative 2i, I just get positive 2i. And that result, 10 plus 2i, would be the sum of these two complex numbers. So in a short phrase, to add complex numbers, you simply combine like terms. But how do you subtract? The same way you would subtract if this were any other expression in an algebra setting. The only thing you have to be on the lookout for, and this gets the best students if they're not careful, is this minus. Because what's being subtracted? Hint, it's not just the 7. The entire quantity, 7 minus 2i, is being subtracted. And you can tell because this entire quantity is in parentheses and there's a subtraction in front of it. So what's the rule for subtracting? Same as it was if there were any other letter besides i. If you ever, that was for emphasis, if you ever see a minus in front of a parentheses, and the contents of the parentheses is an addition or subtraction problem containing multiple terms. Terms are, we'll get into the strict definition of a term, but for our purposes, you can spot them because they're separated by addition and subtraction. So this expression has two terms, 7 and negative 2i. But if you ever see a subtraction in front of a parentheses and the contents of the parentheses contains multiple terms, the subtraction gets distributed to each term. Distributing a subtraction is like multiplying by negative one, so the net result is all the terms change their signs. 
So this positive 7 becomes a negative 7, but this negative 2i becomes a positive 2i. Now what about the first parentheses? And I should have mentioned this in the addition problem. The first parentheses are really unnecessary. They're more for emphasis. Look at this thing here. It's a complex number. Same thing up there. In the addition problem, I really didn't need to worry about the parentheses because there was nothing in front of them requiring distribution. And you might argue, what about this plus? Well, it's like a plus 1. So you're essentially distributing positive 1, which doesn't change anything. However, down here in the subtraction problem, you're essentially distributing a negative 1, which changes everything. This first complex number has nothing in front of the parentheses, so there's nothing requiring any distribution. Or, if you really wanted to push the envelope, sure, there's always a, a 1 multiplied in front of anything. So you can distribute the 1 if you want to, but why are you wasting your time doing that? 1 times anything is itself. This first set of parentheses is unnecessary. There was nothing in front of it requiring it to be there. We can drop it. And now, just like addition, it's time to combine like terms. So what do we get when we combine the real parts? Well, the first real part is 3, and the second one is negative 7. When you combine 3 and negative 7, you get negative 4. And what do we get when we combine the imaginary parts? Well, positive 4i and positive 2i is positive 6i. Now, uh, if your brain is going positive 6i squared, stop that. Squaring means multiplying something times itself. I'm not multiplying anything. The only time you start creating powers is when you start multiplying, which you'll see in the next video. But when you're adding, the rule is simple. If they're like terms, you can combine them, but they stay that same like term. Combining i's and i's just gives you a different number of i's. The final result of the subtraction problem is negative 4 plus 6i. This is done. So addition and subtraction is something that you've already seen before. Addition is combining like terms. And so is subtraction after you've taken care of any distributed negative signs. All right, and that concludes this video.